the shoreline. Where the land meets the ocean is the ideal place to find both natural and man-made treasures. Take a metal detector and scour your surroundings for rare seashells or pirate's gold. You can find priceless objects if you look hard enough. And sometimes, exotic things can come upon you. Every now and then, odd and alien creatures wash ashore and can't always find a way home. The Hubs got an up-close look at these amazing, creepy, and beautiful organisms. They're living, organic discoveries, and they make up the 10 biggest washed-up creatures removed from beaches. Like a red buoy directing you to the perfect swimming spot, the subscribe button will lead you to more Hub content, drudged up from the bottom of the sea. Globster, Indonesia In the first half of 2017, this news story made waves, no pun intended as the unidentifiable remains of a gigantic creature was found on the shore of a remote inlet in Indonesia. Washing up on the beach of Maluku province, this beast was 50 feet long and appeared to have protruding tusks from what witnesses thought must have been the creature's face. When it was first found, a local fisherman thought it was an overturned boat until he got a closer look at the smelly thing. Based on what appeared to be tentacles sticking out from the monster's body, he guessed that it could be the remains of a squid but the rumored tusks were later determined to be the bony baleen plates of a whale. Such protrusions are used by baleen whales to swim through schools of small fish and catch prey, like a sort of netting. Although the reason for its mooring is unknown, the bacteria gathered inside of the whale caused it to inflate, stinking up the area with pungent odors, and it created quite a mess for the local population to clean up. Left to their own devices, those who call the Maluku coastline home would probably need to recruit boat owners to the area just to tow the thing out to sea and clean the now murky waters. Manatee, the Philippines. Elsewhere in Asia, a 20-foot long mystery mammoth showed up on a beach in the Philippines, another globster, which is the term for an amorphous blob that deceased whales become after they start to show their inner fibers. The scientists in the area had a hard time deciding which species of whale this was, as fin whales, blue whales, humpback whales, and minke whales frequent the currents surrounding the island nation. However, Lucy Baby, the chief scientist with a leading animal charity, posed that this unidentified lying object was probably a manatee. At around 6 meters long, without factoring in a missing tail section, this is one large manatee. Also known as sea cows, these friendly mammals eat only seagrass and other greenery, and usually measure around 15 feet long. Though they team up with mates for reproducing, and mothers take close care of their young, they tend to spend their adulthoods in solitary states, so it's not hard to imagine a large lone manatee out for a long swim on his own when he comes down with a bad illness, or is struck by a ship and drifts ashore. The local community would need to recruit a special service to get the remains removed without contaminating the area more than it already is. Megamouth Shark, the Philippines A lot can happen in a century. Populations can rise and fall, countries can grow and change, and families can go through entire generations. While reaching the age of 100 is quite the achievement for us humans, megamouth sharks probably wouldn't be cognizant of their centennial, which is a shame because these creatures of the deep could probably use the light from 100 birthday candles on account of how deep, dark parts of the ocean they call home. With a gaping mouth, their name and facial features may make them seem rather imposing. Yet when the citizens of the Barangay Maringdon beaches in the Philippines found a 5-meter-long megamouth drifting in shallow waters, they named him Toothless in spite of his 50 rows of teeth. Once beached, excited scientists celebrated the prospect of studying this specimen, as only 64 human interactions have ever been recorded with this species. Although rarely seen by previous generations, future Filipinos will be able to visit him regularly at the Albany Park and Wildlife Center. The Megamouth has a preferable end to the shark from Jaws. Ending up in a museum seems much more pleasant than biting onto an oxygen tank while chasing after the pesky local sheriff. Lion's Mane Jellyfish, New Hampshire New Hampshire is home to quiet New England towns and scenic park settings. Unfortunately, a recent trip to the beach saw chaos break out for 150 beachgoers. Known as one of the largest jellyfish species to swim in the waters around North America, a particular lion's mane was moved by the current through a sea of bathers swimming in the popular Wallace Sand State Park of Rye, New Hampshire. According to a biologist affiliated with Baltimore's National Aquarium, lion's mane jellyfish can have trails of thousands of tentacles, ending in a venomous stinger. While this particular animal had expired, it broke apart as park employees tried to remove it from the water, and its still potent stingers drifted towards the shallow and populated shore. 
Luckily for most of the afflicted visitors, a solution of baking soda and vinegar was all that was needed to nullify the venom, and only five of the 150 stung needed to be hospitalized. At the size of a trash can lid, and with tentacles extending around 25 feet, this lion's mane jellyfish had a wide range, but couldn't compare to a similar specimen, who washed ashore in 1870 with a length of 150 feet. Pilot Whales, New Zealand Most animals who wash ashore have hit land after it's too late. At this point, they're usually beyond saving. In New Zealand, on the other hand, when 400 pilot whales were stranded on an isolated beachfront, bystanders jumped into action and managed to save a hundred of the poor animals. Known as Farewell Spit, the piece of land served as the mooring place for all of the grounded whales who were discovered by locals after they'd been beached for some time. While it was too late for many of the lost sea mammals, rescuers were able to coordinate a team effort, pushing the survivors back out into deeper waters. Sadly, the whales soon beached themselves again, further down the beach later that night. All these whales were found the next day, and dedicated citizens created a human knot along the shore so that the whales wouldn't ground themselves back on land again. Their dedication kept the whales off of dry sand long enough for them to find a separate herd of pilot whales who knew the depths of the region and steered the surviving whales out of danger. While it's always a shocking sight, New Zealand is the world's leader in the beaching of whales. Case in point, just a century ago, 1,000 pilot whales were stranded ashore. Hopefully they've gotten better at steering, especially since they have the word pilot in their name. Loggerhead Turtle, New Jersey Look, we all want to be friends with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We can use a pal like Leonardo who takes charge, or a book smart Donatello to help with our studies. And even though Raphael is cool but rude, we can always rely on Michelangelo to be a party dude. These turtles have the capacity for so much friendship and support that sometimes you just have to give back to the shelled community. People in Cape May, New Jersey were able to do just that when they spotted the staggers and labored breathing of a 280-pound loggerhead turtle emerging from the surf. Representatives from the local Marine Mammal Stranding Center, with the help of members of the Cape May County Fire Department, lifted the massive animal to a local veterinarian for blood testing. In their capable hands, they were able to remove the creature from the scene for rehabilitation, with plans to release it back into the wild once its ailments were cured. As a testament to the Stranding Center's abilities, another big turtle had been released back into the ocean the same day the loggerhead was discovered, proving that Cape May is the ultimate rehab center for wayward turtles. Smooth Skate, New Zealand Off the coast of Waitarate Beach, New Zealanders discovered an odd sea creature the size of a professional basketball player. This six foot six inch creature, the color of pearls, displayed a waxy head of stiff cartilage and a long snaky spine indicative of a smooth skate. In case you're confused, these beach denizens didn't find a slender rollerblade or an appropriately nicknamed jazz musician on the beach. Instead, they found a smooth skate, which is the name of a bottom-feeding long fish that dwells in the dark, seedy underbelly of New Zealand's coastal waters. Not yet on the endangered species list, these skates are considered to be threatened by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Thanks to a slow rate of puberty, these creatures are often caught before maturity, limiting the smooth skate's reproduction opportunities and leading to a near crisis in the population. Though the creature can be found if you fish deep enough, an area veterinarian was able to easily take the smooth skate's remains for personal study. While it's a cool-looking fish, it's not necessarily the kind of specimen you want to mount on your trophy wall. Basking Shark, United Kingdom In the rocky waters off of Cornwall, the United Kingdom's largest species of shark was found, stuck against the rocky surface. The basking shark is the second biggest shark in the world, and this particular fish was a mean 25 feet long. Cornwall's Marine Strandings Network was dispatched to get a closer look at the shark, determine what caused its beaching, and see what else could be learned about basking sharks as a whole. Usually, sickly sharks stick to deeper waters and pass on in those areas, so to have a basking shark, which is rarely seen in the wild by scientists, poses great possibilities for the community of Cornwall biologists. While this shark seems highly threatening with its dominating size and shape, Basking sharks won't pose much danger to humans if encountered in the wild, especially since they only eat tiny and harmless organisms. With mouths that look like giant vents, basking sharks can reach a size of 40 feet, but belong to the rare and fair few species of sharks, there's only three total, that eat microscopic organisms. As they feed mainly in April and May, charter yourself a boat next spring to the English coast so you can glimpse these gentle giants firsthand. Crocodile, Australia 
Sometimes, creatures wander into a crowded watering hole with a purpose, like this large 14-foot croc who meandered onto the Strand Beach in Australia. As a saltwater crocodile, this behemoth waltzed across the sand, heading towards a nearby playground before it was detained by park officials, who subdued it with a specially made croc-catching hook. Acting like a fisherman's hook, it grabs onto the crocodile's skin so the hook's operator can have some control over the croc's movements. At 50 years old with a missing eye and only three teeth, this croc's seen better days, but local ranger and crocodile expert Michael Joyce said that he's one tough and successful bugger. According to Joyce, these animals spend their lives bickering over turf with other crocodiles, and usually ones that are half a century old or more tend to have more scars and less limbs than this curious guy. Still, it took two hours and eight men for the park's team to wrestle with and eventually capture the irate animal before muzzling and transferring it to a nearby zoo for study. Noted as the first crocodile to be caught around the Strand Beach, saltwater crocodiles have been known to wriggle their ways into other public sites in the North Queensland area of Australia. Blue Whale, Northern California We often hear about a variety of types of whales beaching themselves on a variety of types of shores, but rarely do we hear about the king of all mammals finding a way inland. In San Francisco, a massive blue whale, nearly 80 feet in length, was found stranded on Agate Beach. Studied by the scientists from the Bay Area's Marine Academy of Science and the Marine Mammal Center, it's believed to have been washed ashore following a collision with a boat. This type of situation can happen in the Bay Area, especially during migration season, which has led to an initiative by ships in the area to travel at low speeds when near the Golden Gate Bridge and associated shorelines to limit the number of boat-to-whale collisions that are possible. Braving the smell of a waterless whale, the scientists were given the rare opportunity to observe the blue whale face to face since these animals are endangered and keep to their deep habitats. With 9,000 total around the world, 30% of the species are concentrated around America's west coast, so if they're going to beach anywhere, San Francisco is a likely location. If you ever come upon the sad sight of a lost animal flailing ashore and out of its element, assess the situation and help if you can. Obviously, you're going to want to avoid the tentacles of a wayward jellyfish or the snapping jaws of an unfortunate shark. But find a safe footing and give them a helpful nudge. Pay it forward. You know that if you found yourself helplessly floating in the ocean, you'd want a helpful nose of a blue whale or the hard shell of a loggerhead turtle to push you back to the surface. Then once you've done your part, come back to the hub and we'll fill you to the gills with more science and nature-related tales than you could wave a fin at. Bye for now.